Welcome classic rock fans to a kind of end of year listing and today I want to talk about my favourite prog albums of 2022. If you're new to this channel please be sure to click like, subscribe and do check that notification bell, it makes all the difference. And if you've got a moment check some of the links below this uh, video for ways you can support the sterling work done here at Classic Album Review. And do stick around until the end because I'll include a few honourable mentions there as well. Number five is Songs from the Hard Shoulder by Tangent. Man, I love this album. This is their 12th studio album and tends to focus on those long form, those epic numbers. I think there's only one song on this album that actually comes in less than 16 minutes. This of course is music to my ears, quite literally and figuratively. And as always, we get this record punctuated by Andy Tillerson's witty and often acerbic lyrics, which are weaved into this um, unique, funky musical style that they have. If you'll forgive me for quoting from the blurb, the band have audibly focused on the compositional structure of this album, which in the case of the three long pieces is also highly complex and thought out. From the luscious and uplifting song about loneliness in Covid lockdown to a full-on 17 minute long jazz prog Canterbury fusion instrumental, to a darkly electronic story of a homeless woman with shades of Nine Inch Nails. Listening to this album, we can definitely detect the influence of uh, people like Bo Hansen and Camels, the Snow Goose. There are even shades of uh, the Canterbury scene stylings there as well, with a nod to Egg and the National Health. Number four for me is Von Herzen Brothers' Red Alert in the Blue Forest. This album is replete with that trademark Von Herzen Brothers style, that big symphonic sound that they do. And it touches upon the importance of our world and a world in peril with the blue forest serving as a specific motif, I think. Uh, and I don't need to explain the idea of the red alert either. From the gentle, haunting psych of So Discarded, if I've said that correctly, to the album Closure disappeared there. This album was described by Metal Planet as a heartfelt, balladic, folk-tinged lament. And this sums up the whole record for me. And not only is it an interesting thematic exploration of nature, the, the range of uh, live musicians and instrumentation employed on this uh, elevates it, I think, from their, their previous records. Von Herzen Brothers are a band that would often cut their teeth thrashing out uh, uh, King Crimson's 21st century schizoid man. Now, uh, with this album, a mature work, we can detect elements of classic prog as, as well as the kind of ecclesiastical trillings of Simon and Garfunkel. This album very much comes from the heart and soul and it's an engaging album. It's an album that, as I said, has nature and conservation at its core. Uh, this is a question I, I put to the band themselves. This is a fascinating record. As I've said, it's replete with all those Von Herzen Brothers tropes, like the big symphonic sound that they have and intriguing vocals. The Red Alert is, a, of course, a, a sonic metaphor, an appeal to safeguard our natural world. It's a mystical and spiritual album. I mean, they are Finnish after all. And there's even references to the Aurora Borealis and Pickled Herring. Well, one of those things anyway. Interesting, this band are on tour next year. They've announced some UK dates. Do check out their website for those. I've seen them live a couple of times. They're definitely worth it. Number three is Welcome to the Planet by Big Big Train. This album uh, came out hard upon the release of Common Ground, I think it was just six months, uh, and is an album of meticulously crafted songs and beautiful, beautiful instrumentation. And it's a celebration, I think a celebration of what it is to be alive. One can't help but feel that it's influenced by the, the tragic passing of, of David Longdon. I think this is uh, very much in keeping with his spirit. Welcome to the Planet is an address to those just coming into the world and Critics have argued that it, it seems a little bit um, naive at times. I prefer the uh, adjective refreshing. But nonetheless, one can't help uh, immerse, just be immersed in the remarkable musicianship and eclectic range of instrumentation employed on these albums. You know, from uh, you know, a range of instrumentation that varies from violin, guitar, flute, mellotron, Hammond organ, and each shine you virtually shine in the mix. The production is absolutely crystalline. The critic uh, Graham Fuller has written of this album, economically used brass adds loungy and cosmopolitan colours redolent of 60s pop and soundtracks and gives the tunes some clarion sharpness. It's uh, a remarkable, remarkable album, a remarkable band and I'm so pleased 
so pleased that they are continuing with a, a new singer. I've never seen them live. It's something I must remedy. And of course, this album is uh, imbued with a lot of emotion. Uh, as I said, it's the it will be the last studio album to feature David Longdon, who tragically died aged 56, I believe, November last year. Number two is Marillion, An Hour Before Dark. Marillion deviate uh, from fear with this one. It's not so spacey and ambient. And with this record, they're definitely looking for something a, a bit punchier. I prefer Fear, to be honest with you. Fear is a, a political album, there's no doubt about that, but it had an ironic observational tone, I think. Apart from New Kings, which is quite a seething, splenetic number, this album is musically stunning. I think the beautiful ornamentation uh, by Mark Kelly's considered keyboard work, beautifully punctuated by the ethereal uh, trill of uh, Rothery's guitar. Care is an outstanding number, and I think it will be hailed as a, a classic of the Marillion era, or at least the Marillion Hogarth era, if you want to go down that road. If there was one criticism I would make of this record, is it does come across as a little bit preachy, with uh, lines thrown in like, listen to Greta T, as well as its uh, exploration of COVID and lockdowns, which is understandable. That's certainly been a big part of all our lives over the last few years. And if you want to thematically revisit that and its aftermath, then this album is a rewarding listening experience. Whereas with Fear, there was this palpable bleakness to it. I think this album, um, although it has this underlying elgiac tone, it belies a, a message of hope and optimism, represented by that little chink of light an hour before it's dark, a glimmer of light extinguished by fear, maybe. Nevertheless, the title is quite a prescient statement for the time and alludes to the uh, the ticking of the doomsday clock. But whereas fear was about global displacement and those shifting demographics of power, this one at least uh, puts some hope in the irrepressible human spirit and its ability to renew. Emily Dickinson famously said that hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul. And we certainly feel that is at the, the very centre of this record. The compositions here have a satisfying ebb and flow and become almost hypnotic, as late Marillion have done. I think the band have become more ambient uh, of late. As well as, of course, we do get the very dramatic, rothery, penetrating solos. The wonderful punctuating drum work from Ian Mosley has to be said. Mark Kelly is outstanding as well. He has been on these last two records. His keyboard backdrops and shadings are quite Eno-esque. And of course, we must mention the the fluid and versatile bass playing of Peter Ravis. This album uh, undoubtedly has a kind of an autumnal atmosphere, maybe belying the band's longevity or the, the time they've been around or the theme or atmospheres explored, perhaps. But there's no doubt in my mind, if we look at the last two albums, that Marillion have become voyeurs of geopolitical shifts. And number one for me is Porcupine Tree's Closure Continuation. I know this album has its detractors, uh, but I uh, absolutely adore it. It's their first album in over a decade and possesses an atmosphere, in the words of Pitchfork, of creeping tension and volatility. Closure Continuation is the band's first album in about 13 years, if I'm not mistaken. I think the last one was 2009's The Incident. And although this album technically announces the band are back together, there seems to be a bit of a caveat there as well with uh, closure and continuation. And of course, let's not forget that the the absence of longtime bass player Colin Edwin is uh, definitely felt on here. The last album, The Incident, was an audacious work. I think one lengthy track segmented into movements. It's uh, an ambitious piece that I really enjoyed. Of course, Harridan was released as a bit of a teaser. It was put out there, and uh, I absolutely adored this number, which uh, instantly made me reach for the pre-sale button. I love the way we get that jarring bass, immediately establishing that unsettling tone of disconnection. Uh, the serenity, of course, is offered by the bridge section, which is just absolutely sublime, offering a beautifully sung counterpoint to the jarring and jagged verses. And these atmospheres and sense of dislocation are explored in the other tracks as well. We get Of The New Day, which has a strangely tetchy feel. Uh, the music embodies that sense of unease due to the, the constant switching in time signatures, never settling on a predictable groove. Rats Return and Heard Culling 
are like Harridan, as they both possess what I would call those nervy bass lines. Uh, Pitchfork has said that uh, these bass lines joust with the impressionistic synths on this record, with a simmering electronic and making it a, an engaging and intriguing listening experience. So there you have it, that's my favourite prog albums of 2022. I'd love to know what your thoughts and opinions are on these. Please leave your comments below and make sure you give this video a like as it all affects the algorithm. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there'd be a few honourable mentions, or at least two anyway. Uh, the first one is by Royal Decree by the Flower Kings, which was absolutely fabulous. I've also been enjoying um, their remasters and remixes, which is definitely worth checking out. And also Solstice, uh, their wonderful album, Light Up. Now this is a bit of a cheat really, as it doesn't officially come out until January the 4th, but it has been sent out for those that pre-ordered it, I think. And uh, I was fortunate enough to acquire a review copy and I've been really enjoying that. I'm gonna be interviewing them uh, in the new year, so watch out for that. So yeah, Flower Kings by Royal Decree and Solstice Light Up, check out those two records. Anyway, instead of my usual salvo, I'll wish you all a very Merry Christmas and hopefully a prog-filled New Year. Stay safe and uh, most of all, keep listening. <laughs>